Numbers. They're floating all around us, whether you like math or not. Nah, seriously, when I say all around us, I mean it. Though you may not always be conscious of the fact that you are constantly interacting and engaging with these foundational blocks of mathematics. Not just when you are flipping through the pages of your math textbook or looking up the calories of the next item that will make its way into your digestive system or jamming to the harmonies of your favorite piece or song on Spotify. Numbers are encrypted into your very DNA into every object that falls within and beyond our limits of perception, into the very core and crust of the universe. Mathematics is essentially the language that makes up our reality, and in stark contrast to what you may have been made to believe in school, this language isn't boring. It isn't merely interesting. It is beautiful, and that is precisely what my friend Shomita and I will try to convince you for the next few minutes. So, let's start off this video with a topic that you'll consider fun, regardless of your mathematical backgrounds. Number Sequences The figurate number sequences are great for mathematical recreation. From the triangular to the hexagonal number series, the sequences emerging here are fun to figure out. Take a look here for instance. You realize we are doing something quite similar to stacking up the previous pile of dots on a base which comprises of a single dot more than those present in the previous layer. In essence, at the nth iteration we end up with as many dots as the sum of all integers between 1 and n, both inclusive. With simple arithmetic progression we figure out that it is n times n plus 1 by 2 or n plus 1 c2. We can extend our previous observations to the hexagonal number sequence. First we have 1 dot, then 6 dots, then 15 dots. Through simple induction, we note that the nth term of the sequence can be written as t of n is equal to t of n minus 1 plus 4 times n minus 1 plus 1. And similarly, we can write all of the previous terms. Note that the similar terms appearing on opposite sides of the equations cancel out on adding all of them. And finally, after a bit of tedious algebraic manipulation, we are left with a very short and simple formula for the nth term of the hexagonal number sequence, which is given by t of n is equal to 2n squared minus n. Then, you might like to figure out what the maximum number of pieces P you can cut a pizza into is, provided the number of cuts N. In mathematics, this is formally known as the sequence of central polygonal numbers or what is more popularly called the lazy caterer sequence. To solve this, you must realize that for the maximum number of pieces to be obtained, the nth cut line should cross all previous cut lines in your pizza, but shouldn't cross the intersection of any previously cut lines. Thus, as you put your knife at work, with each slice you are essentially creating n new pieces. With one piece to start with at zero cuts, this gives us the sum of the first n natural numbers, add 1 to it, that is 1 plus n into n plus 1 by 2 or as you see p equals n square plus n plus 2 whole by 2 where n is the number of cuts. Or wait, maybe you still aren't interested yet cause you don't want to share your pizza with loads of people. In which case, don't go just yet as we are just stepping onto one of the most simple yet elegant sequences that ever existed which is to be our main focus in this video. Yes, we are talking about Fibonacci numbers. So, let's start off by taking a look at the sequence, shall we? 
Oops, I missed in a 5 there. Anyways, so as you can see the sequence starts off with 0 and 1. You add them both, get 1 again. Add 1 and 1, get 2. 1 and 2, get 3. And so you see that you get each succeeding number by simply adding in the two numbers just preceding it. And that is exactly what this equation suggests. The Fibonacci sequence was initially discovered in ancient India and was embraced in Europe during the early 13th century thanks to the Italian mathematician Leonardo Bonacci, more popularly known as Fibonacci, when he introduced the concept of Hindu-Arabic numeral system through his book, The Libera Bacci. So, what is so special about this plain, straightforward sequence, you may ask? Well, you're in for a surprise. Not only do Fibonacci numbers make their appearances in core areas of math such as logistics, but also in areas that are apparently far removed from the logical structure of mathematics, namely in nature and in art, in music, and even in classical theories of proportion and design. So, let's allow nature to flex for a moment, shall we? Take a look at this pineapple. When we traverse along one of these helical structures, you can see that the number of segments in this direction ends up as being 13. Now, you realize that each of these segments are actually a part of individual spirals that are present on the pineapple. So, in essence, we end up with 13 spirals when we go around this direction. You can see similarly that if we try the opposite way around, we end up with 8 such spirals. Fibonacci for you again. In fact, a majority of plants take it a step further than just this and apply this sequence in a somewhat indirect manner in arranging their leaves in a way that ensures each leaf getting maximum possible sunlight without being overshadowed by a leaf placed directly over it. How do the Fibonacci numbers come into play here? Well, this calls for a slightly deeper look at these numbers, to be more precise, at the ratio of any consecutive numbers in the sequence. We see that the ratio oscillates in between 1 and 2 before converging or settling in on a not quite so random number as we go higher and higher up the sequence. That number is 1.618. This ratio 5 was discovered by the Greeks and is known as the golden ratio. It is hidden subtly or rather not so subtly in intricate details of the universe's framework. So what the plant's leaves are really doing is, they are arranging themselves at an angle of about 137.508 degree, the golden angle which comes out from the golden ratio. The ratio G by 360 degree equals 1 by 1 plus phi, which you realize due to the nature of phi is irrational and hence no two leaves can overlap. There you go, nature's beauty at work. Now, you already saw how the spirals on a pineapple or a sunflower end up forming the Fibonacci sequence. You can pick up anything from a pine cone to flower petals, anything with these spirally patterns, and check out for yourself that indeed you end up with the Fibonacci numbers. Always? Well, not quite. There are anomalies. You may end up with numbers like 4 or 7 or even 29. What's going on here? So is this some fallacy we have come up with? No. In fact, take a look at this sequence. 2, 1, 3, 4, 7, 11 and so on. These numbers are Lucas numbers. We thus see that the Lucas numbers are also connected by fundamental recursion. Just like Fibonacci numbers. And what remains common to the appearances of both these sequences in nature is in fact the golden ratio. The two spirals you are seeing here, one emerging from the Fibonacci numbers and the other from the Lucas numbers, are in essence good approximations of the golden spiral. Unlike the Archimedean spiral, which is an arithmetic spiral, 
As you can see here, how such a spiral can be formed if a point moves at a linear rate along a line segment rotating at constant angular velocity around the origin. Well, unlike that, the golden spiral is a logarithmic spiral. Now I'm going to show you a series of format spirals and this includes both of the spirals we already talked about. As we change the seed angle very slightly, you can see the arms of the spiral changing rapidly. And now at 137.5 degrees we have the golden spiral. Now note how this logarithmic spira mirabilis is self-replicating in nature. Fascinating, right? Anything else pops to your mind? Like say fractals perhaps? These infinitely self-replicating structures whose fractal dimensions strictly exceed their topological dimensions? Yet another whammy revelation and frequent occurrence of nature. However, we shall save more on fractals for a future video as it isn't quite in the scope of discussion here and let's hence not stray off the topic. Well, so far I hope you are able to appreciate the finesse of mathematics. Instead of moving on to some more thought-provoking and rigorous mathy stuff, slightly more advanced than what we've dealt with so far, I think I should perhaps go into some detail on the applications of the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio in music and art for all you musicians and artists out there. Hey Koina, we are not here for this now. Fibonacci numbers are present in notes that make up musical scales. For example, the pentatonic scale has 5 notes, the diatonic scale has 8 notes, and the chromatic scale has 13 notes. What makes music pleasing and not boring to our ears is the harmonics, that is, a series of frequencies that are multiples of a fundamental frequency. If we look carefully, we find that Fibonacci numbers relate to ratios of harmonic frequencies. A root note has a ratio 1 is to 1, its octave 2 is to 1, a fifth above it has a ratio 3 is to 2, and so on. Looking into musical compositions, we can find out that the climax of several pieces or songs often occur at the golden mean point, and there is enough evidence to suggest that famous classical composers the likes of Beethoven, Mozart and Bartok have used Fibonacci numbers and golden mean to compose measures of music and structure their compositions. In fact, Mozart used to compose his musical sonatas in such a way that the ratio of number of bars for development and recap to the number of bars in exposition would always approximately equal 1.618. Whoa, who would have thought now? Even the bass cliff resembles a golden spiral, don't you think so? Furthermore, take a look at a violin. The queen of all musical instruments, sophisticated and aesthetic in its design, majestic and exquisite at its tonal qualities. Well, violins were designed and built around the golden ratio. Just take a look at the scroll. It reflects the golden mean phi once again. And even this guitar, esta hermosa guitarra española, again the golden ratio. The viola though sadly doesn't fit in the golden guy. Lol, <laughs> sorry, just kidding, I love the viola. And well, it's not just the musical instruments, I mean, look at these logos and these wonders in the field of architecture. They all have the phi hidden in them. And well, I know that the joke goes that you simply cannot put the golden spiral on top of everything, but well, here goes anyways. 
Now let's take a look at something which will hopefully not terrify you. Binet's formula for Fibonacci numbers is as shown. Well, in case it doesn't scare you away and you don't find it hopelessly meaningless, perhaps you'd like to give a shot at proving it. And once you have tried, head down below to the link in the description where you can find the proof. The Fibonacci and Lucas numbers appear across all disciplines, from logistics and bifurcation diagrams to cryptography, combinatorics, probability and much more. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out its continuation on our new channel. The link's up there. Leave your suggestions, share this video with your friends and acquaintances who you believe might appreciate it, to people who like math so that they can join in the fun, and to people who are scared by it in order to help them find new joy and curiosity in the subject that is the ethereal language of the cosmos and make them believe that anyone can be math people. Well then folks, we hope to see you on the other video. Do subscribe if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe to the other channel at any cost. It will be much more cleaner and you won't be lost in a mess of content as on my channel here. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.